Why do we even use maps? On a map, the magnitude of the globe, our current location and our desired destination are all readily apparent. There are occurrences that can take place at various periods that alter these maps. Today the Ukrainian army was successful in shifting the battlefield's orientation once more. The Russian forces sustained a significant amount of casual. The significance of this incident was brought to light by intelligence reports from the UK. So what exactly took place in Ukraine? If you're ready, let's get this party started. The Ukrainian armed forces have been engaged in combat for some time now in an effort to free Russian-occupied territory. The last few days have seen a significant uptick in the intensity of this. The Russian military has started to lose control over the territories that they have occupied. The Ukrainian army is victorious in the battle. The Russian military is compelled to withdraw from all of the territory it has gained in Ukraine. This is as a result of the fact that the Ukrainian armed forces are currently engaging in very successful extraordinary activity. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense frequently releases statements regarding their expectations regarding the outcomes of these confrontations. These statements demonstrate how precarious the situation currently is for the Russian forces. The utterances made today have caused Putin a great deal of distress. The Russian fighters were unsuccess. According to a map that was made public today by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, Russia has sustained extremely significant losses in the Olyar district of the Danes Alos. The battlegrounds have once more shifted in favor of Ukraine as a result of recent developments in an effort to occupy more land. Russia organized military activities on multiple fronts. Attacks were carried out by the Russian forces in 71 different regions, including KK, Lyman, Bakhman, Nevsky, and Diva. However, the Ukrainian force was able to repel each and every one of these assaults. Hundreds of soldiers from the Russian army were killed or endured. As a result of these activities, it has been suggested that 660 Russian soldiers lost their lives as a result of these operands. An estimated 150,000 Russian fighters have lost their lives so far. Everyone in Ukraine is talking about this. Hero warriors step forward to save the day during the darkest of times, and their actions alter everything. Heroes have the potential to emerge victorious in times of extreme peril and during times of armed. One brave individual was all it took to turn things around. In the Ukrainian armed forces, everyone in Ukraine is discussing the heroic deeds of this individual. The heroes' gripping accounts of battle are truly remarkable in their own right. If you are prepared, let's get this party started. Eugene was an exceptional student who achieved a lot of. After completing his education, he intended to give back to his nation by fighting in the military. But by the time he received his diploma, his nation was in a state of emergency. Eugene had the intention of protecting his nation from the impending Russian onslaught. Therefore, he enlisted in the military. His time in the military was very productive and he advanced through the ranks very rapidly. When Russia first started its invasion of Ukraine, Eugene was one of the most accomplished lieutenants in the Ukrainian army. He was serving in the Ukrainian army at the time. They won many victories against the Russian army. Following the Russian army's incursion into Ukraine, tens of thousands of Ukrainian citizens voluntarily enlisted in the Ukrainian. Oleg Eugene's father was one of those individuals. They were both overcome with feeling when they learned that Oleg would be leaving soon for his deployment. Ivan Serko, a prominent Cossack general from the 17th century inspired the naming of the 92nd Mechanized Brigade, which he served in during his time in the service. Eugene, a successful businessman and Oleg's son, was given leadership of this brig. Both the father and the boy were fighting together against the Russian invasion on the same front. Together, they took part in a number of different activities during these operations. They were victorious over the Russian forces on a number of occasions together in the conflicts they battled. They were successful in driving the occupiers out of three different towns. They went through a lot of feelings during these procedure. However, the feelings of the woman who was waiting for them at home were even more intense at home. Oleg's wife and Eugene's mother were looking forward to seeing them when they arrived. She was extremely concerned, but also extremely pleased of herself. She never stopped praying for the end of the conflict so that her husband and son could return home safely throughout each conflict on the battleground. Ole and Eugene kept her in their thought. The Ukrainian military was successful. The liberation of Sens by the Ukrainian army was characterized by a series of extremely difficult battles. The Ukrainian army was successful in their mission as a direct consequence of this operation. During the course of the operation, the Russian forces lost a significant number of soldiers. Lieutenant Eugene had a significant impact on the outcome of this mission. During this mission, he made a choice that ended up being instrumental in preventing the loss of the lives of many other warriors. A missile assault was initiated by the Russian army against Ukrainian soldiers who were advancing with tanks at the 
At the precise moment when these projectiles were aimed at the tanks, Lt. Eugene made a decisive choice. Tanks belonging to the Ukrainian forces moved forward into the surrounding forest. At this point, three tanks moved through the gap in the woods. These trees had a very sizable hole dug in them by fighters from Ukraine. In point of fact, this crater was excavated in order to eliminate the Russian tanks that were approached. However, Eugene made the astute choice to lower the Ukrainian army tanks into the hole, which made it possible for the soldiers to evade the missile assault. However, they were unable to escape the tanks for several hours. Reinforcements for the Ukrainian troops arrived and they immediately destroyed the Russian missiles. Following that, the tanks that were buried in the pit were brought to the surface and the warriors were. Because Eugene made this choice, all three tanks and the personnel inside of them were spared. It turned out that one of these warriors was actually his father. The Ukrainian commanders had high praise for the lieutenants, brilliant achievement and meticulous planning throughout this operation. Within the ranks of the Ukrainian armed forces, Lt. Eugene was revered as a, in a different engagement. He was successful in eliminating 16 Russian fighters with a machine gun. Because of this incredible achievement in battle, he became a celebrity. The lieutenant was held in extremely high regard by the Ukrainian military. The lieutenant freed many locations and was responsible for the survival of dozens of soldiers. However, during one procedure, things did not go as. A significant conflict with the Russian forces took place in the vicinity of the town of Piedakaki. During the course of several hours of battling, a large number of Russian soldiers lost their lives. However, the Russian army received reinforcement from other fronts. Rockets were among the various types of ammunition that the new soldiers carried. Oleg, the father of lieutenant was the first person who realized that the Russian army was going to initiate a rocket attack. This realization came as a complete surprise to lieutenant Oleg was a former colonel in the Ukrainian army before he resigned. He was exceptionally skilled with machine firearms and sniper rifles. Oleg launched an assault on the Russian fighters in order to stop the oncoming rocket. He fought valiantly until the machine gun in his hand fired its final round. But he was ultimately sacrificed after learning that his father had passed away. Lieutenant Eugene and the soldiers under his command refused to hand over the village of Pakaki to the Russians, earning the respect of all of Ukraine in the process. Ukrainian drone shot down near Moss. According to statements made by the governor of the Moscow region, a drone that was most likely being used in an attempt to attack civilian infrastructure has just crashed. After the defense ministry reported shooting down two Ukrainian drones in southern Russia, Andreev took the podium to discuss the incident. The Ukrainian government denies any involvement in the assaults that took place inside of the energy conglomerate Gazprom in Russia runs a facility not far from the town of Guba Ovo, which is approximately 100 kilometers 62 miles from Moscow. This is the location where the drone plummeted according to statements made by Gazprom to the state-controlled news agency, Arya Novosti in Russia. The company's activities in the Kalogner region have not been. According to a message that was posted on Telegram by Mr. Vorobov, the target of the drone in Kalana was presumably a civilian infrastructure facility, which was not damaged. There have been no injuries or property damage reported on the ground. Investigations are currently being conducted by the Russian Federal Security Service, FSB, as well as other appropriate authorities. He, images that have been circulated by Russian media and government authorities show a damaged drone lying in a snow-covered field in front of a birch tree forest. The land in the immediate vicinity of the Gazprom building is densely wooded. The appearance of the unmanned aerial vehicle is identical to that of the UJ-22 Airborne, which was manufactured by the Ukrainian company, UKR. According to UKR Jet, the vehicle has a capacity of 800 kilometers, which is sufficient for it to travel from Ukraine to the region of Kona. There are no previous matches for the picture when it is viewed in reverse, which indicates that it was just created recently. A picture of the drone was shared on Twitter by Anton Chenko an advisor to the Minister of Interior Affairs in. It is further than 500 kilometers away from the boundary between Russia and Ukraine. As drones become more capable of traveling great distances, Vladimir Putin may quickly develop a crippling fear of appearing in public. He wrote in the caption next to the photo, If it is determined that Ukraine was responsible for the Kalogna drone, then this would be the first time that a drone strike has been attempted in such close proximity to the capital of Ukraine since Russia's invasion of Ukraine more than a year ago. It was reported at the same time that Russian forces had shot down two Ukrainian drones in southern Russia by the Russian defense. The ministry accused Kiev of attempting to use drones to target civilian infrastructure in the Kroznadar region and in the ADI Republic, and added that these attempts were neutralized by electronic warfare units. Moscow has accused Ukraine of being the driving force behind attacks on Russian military infrastructure during the conflict. However, Kiev has not substantiated this alec. The Ukrainian armed forces refused to cooperate with the assault. According to reports from Moscow, 
Three persons were killed in December when a drone attack from Ukraine targeted an airbase in southern Russia used by bombers. Although the Ukrainian military did not issue an official admission of responsibility for the attack, a spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force named Yuri Annette stated that the explosions were the product of Russian activity on Ukrainian territory. A few short weeks ago, Russia made the accusation that Ukraine was responsible for a similar assault on the same airfield. This airfield is home to bombers that have carried out missile attacks on. A number of explosions rocked a military base in Crimea in the month of August. This was interpreted as a substantial expansion of the conflict by Ukraine into Crimea, which was occupied by Russia after it annexed Ukraine in 2014. After the fact, Ukraine asserted that they were the ones responsible for the. On Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin gave orders to the Federal Security Service FSB to step up their operations against what he described as an increase in surveillance and sabotage coming from Ukraine and the West. He gave orders to the FSB to beef up security in Russian-occupied territories in eastern Ukraine, and they carried them. He stated that the troops that have been stationed at the border are responsible for stopping sabotage groups and preventing the passage of illegal weapons and ammunition. He stated that because Western special services have historically been very active in connection to Russia, we need to beef up our counterintelligence on a general level. They have now increased their attacks against us by deploying additional personnel, technological, and other resource. It is imperative that we act appropriately. On Tuesday, the Russian Ministry of Defense announced that the country's fighter aircraft had participated in a training exercise in the country's western airspace. This news came several hours after the airspace over St. Petersburg was closed. Due to reports of an unidentified opt, the leader of NATO Jens Stoltenberg has stated that Ukraine will join NATO in the long. But for the time being, the country needs to maintain its independence in the face of an incursion from Russia. For many years, Ukraine has pursued membership in the military alliance that is headed by the United States. After Russia invaded the country, President Velo, Der Zelensky requested for that request to be prioritized so that it could be dealt with more quickly. In the days following Russia's invasion, Ukraine also submitted an application to join the EU and was granted candidate status. In June, Mr. Stoltenberg made these remarks to the media while he was in Helsinki, the capital of Finland. During a visit to the city, he was there on an official visit to Finland. Allies of NATO have decided that Ukraine will become a member of our alliance, Mr. Stoltenberg. What is at stake right now is whether or not Ukraine can emerge victorious as an independent sovereign country. For many years, Ukraine has attempted to join the military alliance that is comprised of the United States of America, Canada, and 28 European countries. This is something that President Vladimir Putin of Russia has characterized as a threat to Russia's. Mr. Zelensky has been pushing for a fast-track accession, but it is unclear whether the alliance members will genuinely contemplate full membership even after the war is over, despite the fact that they have pledged their support during a press conference with the Finnish Prime Minister's son. Marine Stoltenberg stated that once the war is over, we need to guarantee that history doesn't repeat itself. It is not acceptable for President Putin to continue attacking neighbor. He is not planning for peace. Rather, he is planning for more war in order to achieve his goal of controlling Ukraine. According to the AFP news agency, he was quoted as stating a Russian tank column was destroyed by an explosion. The hamlet of Bakhmut is still the site of ongoing fighting. The most recent statements indicate that an assault on the Russian tank convoy was carried out using the FGM-148 Javelin missiles that the United States had provided to Ukraine. Five Russian tanks were destroyed by explosions caused by Ukrainian fighters on the other side. Drones operated by the Ukrainians attacked Russian trenches. A failed attempt by the Russian Solidar to bring down the Ukrainian drone by shooting it down was. An unmanned aerial vehicle from Ukraine dropped explosives and hand grenades on Russian troops. And the next news, Wagner soldiers continue their attack. In a written statement, the commander of the Ukrainian land forces, Alexander Seki stated that despite his large losses, the enemy is attempting to break the defense forces of our soldiers by dispatching Wagner's best trained troops and besieging the city. A video depicting a flying Su-25 fighter aircraft attacking Och. Mid City was also published by the Russian State News Agency, which is abbreviated as R on the video. It can be heard that someone who was introduced as a mercenary soldier of Wagner said, we are happy to be ours, and that he provided them psychological support. This is something that the video shows. On the other hand, reports have indicated that other facades in the neighborhood have been fixed in the positions occupied by the soldiers. The shifting soil problem was addressed as a result of the warming but the land trenches became covered in mud instead. Key statement from Russia on the other side, the spokesperson for the Kremlin, Dmitry Peskov, stated that there was no explanation given about the negotiations with Ukraine. Peskov stated in reference to the possibility of resolving the issue concerning Ukraine through the use of the negotiating table, that so far no one has seen any indication by. 
Kiko emphasized that the accomplishment of Russia's OB objectives in Ukraine is a priority, and he said there are some facts as a result. There are new territories that are a part of Russia. There is a constitution that states that the Russian Federation should never be disregarded and the Russian side must never give up. Considering the appropriate attitude of the Ukrainian regime and the appropriate attitude of the Ukrainian regime, it is obvious that this issue may also be resolved through the process of negotiation. Despite this, it is our top responsibility, air attack alert. The attack warnings that were published as a result of a cyber assault on some regional television stations in Russia instructed viewers to seek shelter as a result of an impending air attack. Pirates have broken into the servers of television and radio stations in certain regions of the country and have published emergency warnings according to a statement that was issued by the Ministry of Emergency. According to the statement, the information in question is false and is not based in reality. RIA News Agency is among the transmissions of the Crimea that have given incorrect information in the videos that have been shared across social media platforms. The message now everyone is in shelters is depicted as a symbol of a guy who ran away to a shelter after seeing it on television with the blare of the sirens from the various radio channels. Attention, attention. Warnings about an impending air assault were broadcast and everyone was advised to take shelter as soon as possible. The impartiality of Switzerland is harmful to Ukraine. According to an article published in one of the most respected publications in the United States, The Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal, Switzerland is preventing the West from sending weapons to. According to the report, Switzerland's policy of impartiality over the course of several centuries has produced an obstacle for the supply of weapons to countries that are members of NATO. In spite of the fact that Switzerland is capable of producing a significant quantity of arms, it was decided that Ukraine should not be given any weapons that contain components manufactured in Switzerland that came from another. Several times during the conflict, the president of the country in AOCAAS declared that his nation would not furnish weapons, Switzerland must support Ukraine. Additionally, the Swiss government stopped Spain and Denmark from delivering Purina 3 armored vehicles to Ukraine, along with air defense systems that contain components manufactured in. On the other hand, a special committee from Ukraine intends to change this policy by visiting Bayern, which is the capital of Switzerland, according to Wall Street Journal. There was no information provided regarding the visit's anticipated timing. The assertions pertaining to Switzerland that were made by Alexander Mersko, the president of the committee, or as follows, they ought to do more to support. Germany, one of the countries that purchased the most military ammunition from Switzerland, was reminded in the report that the Bern administration has been under pressure to change their stance of impartiality since the beginning of the conflict. This pressure came from Germany. Well, the Swiss Federal Assembly adopted a Switzerland, which remained neutral throughout both of the great world wars that occurred in the 20th century, contends that this policy cannot be exempted because it is a part of the constitutional order and therefore cannot be changed. On the other hand, some members of parliament have drafted a measure that would authorize the re-export to Ukraine of Swiss-made weapons and military equipment that is held in the stockpiles of other countries. However, the Wall Street Journal pointed out that even if the bill is accepted, it will not go into effect until at the earliest the following year. This was written in an article that stated it is not yet obvious whether this will pass through the parliament. According to Terry Burkhardt, a member of the Liberal Party who was among the parliamentarians who drafted Allowing the re-export of Swiss materials does not contravene Switzerland's impartiality. However, rejecting the bill could lead to the destruction of the country's arms industry. It is for the purpose of war that weapons are manufactured. Therefore, if we choose not to share them with our allies, we will put a stop to the production of weapons. On the other hand, it was brought to people's attention that the bill was opposed by organizations on the right, the center-left, the conservatives and the center-left in addition to the anti-war Green Party in the country. On the other hand, during the 53rd World Economic Forum that took place in Davos, Switzerland last month, NATO Secretary General Y. Stoltenberg, the President of the European Commission, Ursula Levon Dulen, and the Mayor of Kia, Vital Klitschko, all called for the Bern administration to change the policy that they have been following. Finland is preparing for the Russian. In order to increase safety along its boundary with Russia, Finland has started building a fence that will be 124 kilometers, 200 kilometers long. According to the Border Patrol, it will be 3 meters, 10 feet tall and have barbed wire on top at a distance of 832 miles. Finland's boundary with Russia is the longest of any in the European. Light wooden fences are the primary means by which Finland's borders are protected at the current time. As a result of an increase in the number of Russian citizens attempting to evade conscription in order to battle in Ukraine, Finland made the decision to construct the fence. On Tuesday, the Nordic nation made additional progress toward becoming a member of the NATO Sea. Its parliament has begun debating a measure to speed up the country's bid, and a vote on the bill is scheduled to take place on Wednesday.
On Tuesday, work on the barrier at the Amatra border crossing began with the clearing of the surrounding forest. However, road construction and the installation of the fence are not scheduled to begin until March. Certain portions of the barrier will receive the addition of night vision cameras, along with lights and loudspeaker. Finland is trying to strengthen the eastern border according to the border guard. A pilot project spanning 3 kilometers at Amatra is anticipated to be finished by the end of the month of June. In July, Finland's legislature approved a number of modifications to its Border Guard Act that will make it possible to construct more robust fence. The primary purpose of the existing wooden fences along the boundary is to prevent livestock from escaping. Following Russia's comprehensive invasion of Ukraine, Finland has made efforts to fortify the frontier along its eastern region. After President Vladimir Putin issued the order to mobilize reservists to fight in Ukraine, a significant number of Russians began fleeing the country and making their way to Finland. In S, after remaining neutral for a number of years, Finland and Sweden came to the conclusion that they needed to become members of NATO as quickly as possible after Russia invaded their territory. On February 24 of the previous year, the procedure of joining NATO was sped up by Finland. The meetings of the Finnish parliament have started in an effort to speed up the process of joining NATO. After the Russian occupation of Ukraine, one of the European countries that shares the longest land border with Russia, Finland, along with Sweden, made an application to NATO to secure the country's own safety following the takeover of Ukraine by the administration in Moscow. On the other hand, the administration in Helsinki, which had to contend with fewer diplomatic roadblocks than Sweden did, gave indications that it would take membership-related measures before the elections that were scheduled to take place in April. Before the elections on April 2, the deputies in the Finnish parliament took the necessary steps to pass the draft law, which authorized that they accepted the NATO. It is anticipated that the measure will be passed without significant opposition. From the very beginning, Finland has had the intention of entering NATO together with Sweden. However, this step of parliament was interpreted as meaning that Helsinki can continue on the path alone. Dangerous machines and the, a mission to assault Russia's flagship in the Black Sea. The Admiral Makarov has been given to this small vessel that is currently dodging bullets while skipping over the choppy waters off the coast of Crimea. As it draws closer to the ship, a flash appears and the live broadcast abruptly stops. This was in all intents and purposes a commando assault, but not in the traditional sense. There was neither a special nor an elite. This operation was carried out by a fleet of drones, nine of which were flown through the air, and seven of which were piloted on the water, and it targeted Russian vessels that were anchored in the port of Sevastopol. We know that the drone we see in the video was created using a standard commercial jet ski because a model with very identical characteristics was found washed up further south along the coast of the Crimean P. The fact that a seaborne drone that was made on the chief was able to take on Russia's most advanced Black Sea Fleet. Frigate is an illustration of a broader shift that is occurring in the way that wars are conducted. The dynamics of contemporary warfare are being altered in this way as a direct result of the proliferation of advanced mobile robotics. This is Kiev on the morning of October 17th when you were looking at it. Drones are flying around up in the heavens, right? Following the humming sound that can be heard, there is a sizable bang that can be heard. This is just one of approximately 28 assaults that were carried out on the capital of Ukraine on that same day. Kamikaze drones, also known as Shahed-136 drones are being used by Russia to attack Ukrainian military positions and vehicles as well as to terrorize civilians and disable important infrastructure. These drones were manufactured in Iran. The Shahed-136, also known as the Moped, is not a particularly advanced piece of technology as its nickname would indicate. It has an engine similar to that of a lawnmower, which accounts for the distinctively noisy buzzing sound that it makes. Each drone is equipped with a payload that weighs more than 80 pounds, which is more than sufficient to cause significant, and in comparison to other pieces of military weaponry. They are quite affordable, costing only about $20,000 each. On the other hand, each caliber cruise missile that Russia deployed during the conflict had a price tag of approximately $1 million. To this point, Ukraine has been successful in shooting down hundreds of these drones. However, the reason Russia has been so successful in employing these machines is because they have a large range and can be released in large numbers from the back of a truck. This has the potential to successfully overpower air defenses as only one or two of their targets need to be destroyed if they are success. Gaining an advantage on the battleground through the use of unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as UAVs, is not something that is exclusive to Russia. The Ukraine frequently uses unmanned aerial vehicles, drones for reconnaissance, surveillance, and offensive purposes. The Russian forces that were occupying Snake Island were attacked by Ukrainian forces using Turkish-made Barak TB-2S. Additionally, the Ukrainians used modified quad copers to drop grenades on Russian infantry that was unaware of the impending assault. 
The Aya Ihar, which was manufactured in Israel and provided A's by Jan with an advantage in the second battle over nagorno karabakh in 20. And in the year 2021, the Ethiopian National Army was able with the help of armed drones to reverse a decisive route that had been carried out by Tigrayan troops. Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, Israel, and Iran have emerged at the forefront of UAVV production and are providing many nations with an alternative route to acquiring this technology without having to rely on the United States or Europe, which have grown reluctant to continue there. Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, Israel, and Iran have all emerged as world leaders in UAVV production amidst the ongoing tensions with China. Taiwan has just recently revealed its very own kamikaze drones and has announced plans to invest $1.6 in the production of armed drones on Taiwanese soil. But the weaponization of general-purpose robots is what prompted leading businesses in the robotics industry to issue this open letter expressing serious concern in China. This particular drone was captured on camera transporting a robot dog, also known as a quadril that had a machine gun mounted to the rear of it. Another modified quadril can be seen here operating a machine gun at a training range in Russia. This one is located in Russia. Similar models for use in the military are currently being developed despite the fact that modified versions of these devices are not yet a regular sight on the battlefield, such as this one, which was on display at the yearly conference of the Association of the United States Army in 2021. Many of the world's armed forces have already made significant investments in a wide variety of AI-powered drones, unmanned weapons, and other machines that will increasingly find their way onto the battlefields of the world. This is despite the fact that there has been a growing call to introduce greater controls over the production, distribution, and use of these types of devices. HAMS missiles were responsible for the destruction of the Russian TS missiles were used by the Ukrainian forces to bring down a significant number of Russian supply convoys. It is impossible for Russian tanks and other types of armored vehicles to defend against Tamar's projectiles. The Ukrainian army was attacked by a Russian convoy that was transporting reinforcement and ammunition to the city of Bakhmin yesterday. The strike was carried out by USR's missile. A significant detonation rendered the tanks and armored vehicles that were part of the convoy. Useless in the presence of American Hamas missiles tanks built using Soviet technology have no chance of survival on the other side. Ukrainian drones were dispatched to Russian soldiers who had evaded capture during the assault. The Russian fighters who managed to escape were pursued by Ukrainian drones. 